So Sonoff sent us a neat little Christmas gift and it was inside of a little stocking. And I was surprised to really see it considering I guess some of the, one of the other gifts was kind of weird that I had from another company, but I won't say any names. So this was the Mini Extreme. And straight out the box, we'll zoom in maybe later or post the stats. It is 10 amps with a single relay. So popping this little guy out, and it is pretty small. I mean, if you're used to the Shelly one, it's just a little bit smaller, but maybe a little bit, I don't know, it's fairly close to me on the sizes. Maybe the Shelly one's a little bit more rounder than the Shelly one plus, of course, it's a little bit bigger. This was also the ESP32 model with Bluetooth. So that's just, I mean, yeah, you're splitting hairs there, which is, I don't know. But one difference that you will see on the Shelly 1 and Shelly 1 Plus is the Shelly 1 Plus, I did look at it, is this one is 16 amps. And the old school Shelly 1s, I believe those are, oh, those are 16 amps as well. Now, one thing I will talk about, and some may not understand it, especially depending on the country, the one thing I don't recommend running this unless they have a fuse inside is in the U.S., most of the circuits in homes are 15 amps. And the problem is once you put something that's 10 amps in line, well, you have a 15 amp breaker. Well, the breaker is always supposed to be the weakest link, and that way if you have a short or something, that way the breaker will pop and you don't have a fire. You're not supposed to. But if you put a 10 amp rated device in there, well now you've made a weak link right here. So if you had a short after this, then potentially this could overheat and catch fire inside your box and that's bad. So enough of that soapbox. Hopefully they will have a fuse inside here that is 10 amps. So let's take a closer look. Yeah, so there's that 10 amp rating right there on the side. It does allow 100 volts to 240 volts. So it should work in the vast majority of the countries with standard mains AC. Now the terminals on here, you're going to get your neutrals, which those are probably combined inside. And then you have your line in and line out or the load out. I did see in the schematics that they you could use this with a dry contact switch or you could use it with a mains AC switch. So that was kind of cool to see it do both. So you could use both kind of switches there. That's pretty slick. I wish the Shelleys would do that as well, especially on AC voltage. Fairly easy. There's no screws, no glue. And we'll see what chip they are using inside. Yeah, so that's the... And you can see right here at the top, those are the neutral. Those are soldered together. And it looks like these two pins are soldered together as well. Interesting. So, so they want you to use S2 when you're using a main switch. But then, but with that being together, oh, see, I was wrong. So you still will need to use a mains AC rated switch because it appears to be mains AC that'll be flowing through that switch point. Ah, so, okay. Not so cool. But, hey, we'll see how this looks. So, there, I noticed there's this pink stuff on the side. It's like this paste. I guess that's like a thermal paste type deal like you would see on some things to help dissipate the heat off of the processor and we'll take a closer look and yep you can see that's ESP it has deteriorated a little bit do that probably that pink goo on there it's an ESP 32 I'm not sure if it's the dual core or the single core we'll take a look and we'll just give it a shot because really is it going to be bootloader locked I mean we've seen stuff like that recently like the little Roku plugs. So it looks like we do have TX, RX. 
the ground and key, I believe that is what I'm seeing. Where would I grab? I just need to grab three volts somewhere. Probably can grab three volts off the bottom of here. I'm not seeing any shunt resistor or anything, so I don't think you'll see power monitoring. It's just going to be a regular switch, a little mini relay. Now, thinking this is going to, this yellow box is the fuse, I believe. This runs straight to this little daughter board, and this daughter board is what ties in the relay. So I'm not seeing, unless I'm totally missing something, shoot me something down in the comments below. I'm not seeing a fuse on this to make it, you know, be 10 amps in case there happens to be a 15 amp short that comes through this. That's unfortunate. So probably not something you'd probably want to use inside if you kind of care about standards of things in your wall in the U.S. Not Oh, we're not even seeing another thing. Well, I guess that kind of leaves that out. You can't use this with DC voltage either. So that can be a limiting factor there. But hey, we can always put a fuse on it as well. But uh, I'm curious to see if we can flash this guy or and see and get it going. Maybe we can even use it as a ESP home Bluetooth proxy. That would be pretty slick. Now, if you are wanting to flash ESP home or Tasmoda, you really need to at this point, because you have the wires connected through serial, decide whether you're going Tasmoda or ESP home on this guy. Because if you go with the newer version, the most standard release of Tasmoda, ESP32, the memory layout does not work and does not allow you to easily change over using over-the-air updates. You will need to reflash that using serial. So that would mean take it back out, solder it back up, and change over. So pick the one you're going to use. Now, if you want to flash Tasmoda on it, it's going to probably be the easiest this is a dual core ESP32 with four megs of flash memory. And I do have a little article on my website and go to digiblur.com. Come down here, say how to flash ESP8266 or ESP32. The recommended method, since it's, as long as you're using Chrome and don't have any permissions issues. Now this one is the easiest. I'm not gonna go all the way through that because I've done that a bunch of times before. If you want to see something like that, shoot me a comment down below. Maybe we'll do a quick little one running through this again. But really just go through and pick Tasmoda, the default one. It'll figure out if you have ESP32 or whatever and hit connect and it will install it. Just follow the prompts. Now, if you do want to use Bluetooth on it, you do need to come down here and pick the Tasmoda 32 Bluetooth English at this time. Of course, it can always change. So just look through the little drop down. If you're curious to see, you can also filter it for ESP32. It'll show you exactly which ones are ESP32 capable. Hit connect and rock and roll. Now, once you do flash Tasmoda, of course, you can go check the link down on my page. And I will have the template, the setup, and the whole thing. You can just copy and paste that straight to your device and rock and roll. If you're going to ESP Home and you want the complete YAML, just jump on over to my website, look for devices and find this device, or you can just do the search for it. I'm going to have the complete YAML files so you can just copy and paste and make the little minor edits that you need. Now, if you want it really kind of new to this doing ESP Home, really what I like to do is I just, you know, just make you a new device, continue. R4, I already have one called 4, so we'll just call it R4A, right? We're going to do ESP32. We'll leave that as default. Hit next. We'll leave this. This is all going to be overwritten anyway. We're going to say skip. And you should see it there. And it's kind of that, you know, it's already there for you. And that way, you can just come in here and hit edit. And then you can copy and paste the pieces you want and need based on your network, whether you need to do static IPs or whatever. You can set your secrets, do whatever. You can copy and paste everything out, or you can just really copy and paste the majority of my YAML file. And that's the whole beauty of ESP Home because you're making your own unique bin file for each device. It's a good and a bad thing. So once you do have your device, already set now i'm using that ble tracker and using the bluetooth proxy on this one 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit install. I know it may sound confusing, but you do need that factory bin file. Now, if you do have this setup where you can just plug into your home assistant box or whatever, wherever you have ESP home running on, then great. You could just plug it into the computer. You can use the other options. I don't have the beauty of that because I don't think I'm using HTTPS, etc. What you want to do for that initial flash on ESP32 with ESP home is hit manual download and you want modern format. Very important. Now, once it goes through, it's going to go ahead and build. It may take a while. It may go fairly quick, just depending on your setup, et cetera. And it's going to download that bin file straight to the computer that you're currently working on. Now, if you just want to do something easy without ESP tool pie, and you just go to web.esphome.io, hit choose file and pick that bin file that just downloaded to your computer. And we'll hit install. And it looks like it's doing the install. Now, the only thing I don't really like about this method, if you have an error of some sort, you really don't get to see all the logs and everything. You can't test that connection. I'll show you the quick command line that you can go in there. And if you want to do the ESP tool pie, you can flash that factory bin. If you're kind of old school like me, we'll jump over there while this is installing. Of course, go back to my website and look on here under the Tasmoda section of all things. Yeah, I know the irony. How to flash, it's gonna be the same, is if you look for the ESP tool pie with the factory bin, you will need ESP tool pie. There's the installation procedure. This is the little test, I like to test. And remember, if you run that test to see what's what on there, if your device is working and connected right, you will need to power cycle it one time to put it back into bootloader mode. But here's the command here, you can just copy and paste that, and you just change the bin file name on the end to the bin file that ESP Home downloaded. But do remember, you need to use that factory one, where it's, or they call it modern, I believe, on the ESP Home GUI. That's because it has the entire partition layout, bootloader, the whole nine yard in one bin file for you. So once it's complete, just hit close. You won't probably won't be able to pull up the logs because we still have it in bootloader mode. So if you do have that GPIO zero pulled to ground, we'll need to power cycle it. And here's our mini R4. You can see now it's no longer offline. There's our logs, good to go, things online. And now we should be able to jump over to Home Assistant itself. Automatically, I got a notification, new devices. Hit check it out. Got me a new mini R4, we'll hit configure, and we got our device. There's our relay. Now, so I did throw a restart one in there for us, and pretty much all there is to it. So that leads me to that question of, well, should you buy it? Well, this is revision four. You would think, you know, fourth time's a charm. I don't know. Maybe they'll get it right with the fifth time is the charm, if that's really the saying going now. The problem I have with it is really in the U.S. market, if you don't have, break, you know, maybe if you do have breakers, you have some weird breakers that are 10 amp, then this would probably be perfect and it would allow you to use this. There's not going to be any DC voltage, so you're not going to use this for any cool little projects like the little Shelly 1 on DC voltage when you're doing, like say those garage door opener projects that I'd love to do with the Shelly 1. So this kind of misses out on that. It is a little bit smaller. It's not that much smaller, so that's not really that big of a deal. If you're really pressed for that much space in a box in the wall, then you probably shouldn't be using this anyway because you're blowing out your fill ratio. Yeah, go look that up if you don't know what that is. If you're not in the U.S. market and you have those 10 amp breakers or we allow you to use 10 amp devices, sure, go ahead. Might be perfect for you, but I guess really I wish Sonoff would have put that little header on there for us like Shelly does. I have to give Shelly all the little check marks because, you know, they give us a firmware that is MQTT capable. There's API, and if you don't want to even flash it, you don't have to, and you can use it fully local and don't even have to install it in their app. So this is not a better mousetrap, but maybe if it's priced right, it might be, I don't know. Don't know what's going to be priced at. So 
Maybe we'll update some stuff down below or things change or whatnot. If you want to find all the links or the setup for the ESP Home, Tasmoda, everything, you'll find all that down below on my website. And I do appreciate you watching. All the Patreon members and YouTube members definitely couldn't do it without you. And, yep, y'all know the drill. Press all the buttons and y'all take care. We're going in.